Exercise 510 is asking you to assign the configuration of the chirality center in this molecule below. So we're going to use the CIP rules to do that, and the chirality center is the one that has that three-dimensional bond around it, the one that's coming out at us. And so uh, we can always check. You can always look to the left. You've got this weird, these weird carbon branches with all single bonds. To the right, you have this triple bond thing. To the top, you have, above, you have the double bond thing. And the fourth thing is an implied hydrogen. So this carbon right here doesn't have a formal charge, and only three bonds are shown, so that last bond must be an implied bond to a hydrogen. And because two of the, this is a tetrahedral molecule, two of the bonds are already drawn in the plane, and one is coming out at us, that fourth one has to be going away. Those tetrahedral molecules always have two bonds in the plane, one coming out and one going away. So that hydrogen is a fourth thing, and so you can see that that carbon there with the red star is bonded to four different things, so it has four different sides like your hand, and so it is handed, or chiral. So it'll come in two different versions, a left-hand version, S, and a right-hand version, R. So our job here is to figure out which version we have, because those two versions will fit into the world differently and behave differently and make the stuff around the molecule behave differently. So the first step, we're going to use the CIP rules, the Kahn Ingold Prolog rules, to figure out uh, whether we have the right or left hand here. And um, the first step in those CIP rules is to assign priorities based on atomic number. So the carbon to the left has an atomic number of six, the carbon above has an atomic number of six, the hydrogen has an atomic number of one, and the carbon to the right has an atomic number of six. Well, the Hydrogen has the lowest atomic number, so that gets the lowest priority, priority of four. The carbons all tie, and when atoms tie, you want to make a table. So we'll make a table for this carbon to the right, for the carbon to the left, and for the carbon above. And we're going to think about what three things those carbons are bonded to going away from the chiral center. So this carbon here is bonded to a carbon, a carbon, and a carbon. So carbon, carbon, carbon. The carbon above is bonded to a carbon once, a carbon twice, and a hydrogen. So carbon, carbon, hydrogen, we're putting those in descending atomic number. And the carbon here is bonded to a carbon, a carbon, and a carbon three times. So carbon, carbon, carbon. Now, once you have these tables, you compare them. And so you only compare them one row at a time. Only if the top row ties would you go to the second row. Here, all the top rows do tie, they all have carbons, so we go to the second row, and all the second rows tie, so we go to the third row. And you'll notice that this third one actually has the lowest atomic number. It's bonded to a hydrogen. So this group above is going to be three. But the other two tie, again. And so whenever they tie, you go to the next atom. So we were just comparing these two. We're going to go away from the chiral center. Now we're going to compare these two. And notice on the left side, oops, on the left side, so this one's the one we're going to look at now. On the left side, you could have gone in a couple directions. You want to go in the direction that gives you the longest carbon chain. So that's why I'm going to the left here rather than down. So the new chiral, the new atom we're looking at, the two new atoms we're looking at here are those ones I have blue dots on. So those are our tables for the carbons before. Now we're going to be making tables for this carbon on the right and this carbon on the left. So the carbon on the right is bonded to a carbon, and then we have to count the other two pi bonds. Now you don't go back toward the chiral center on a sigma bond, but you can on a pi bond, and so those two pi bonds count as bonds to carbons there. On the left side, this carbon is bonded to a carbon, a carbon, and a hydrogen. Notice, we don't go back toward the chiral center on sigma bonds. So we've got uh, our two tables now, and we can compare them going one column at a time, the top row, or one row at a time, the top row ties. So we go to the second row, which also ties. So we go to the third row, and we see that the carbon here has a higher priority than the hydrogen on that other carbon. So here, this will be our one and then this branch over here will be our second priority.
All right, so that's our first step, assigning priorities based on atomic number. The second step is to make sure that four is going away, and four here is going away, which is very nice for us. That means all we have to do is go from one to two to three. And because we're going clockwise, this is going to be the right-handed version of this molecule, the R. So that atom with the red star, that carbon, is the right-handed version of itself. It has an R 